editor, KDK Television, CBS Pittsburgh. And our very special guest is our state treasurer, Joe Torcella, Democrat who's running for re-election. Treasurer Torcella, nice to be with you again. John, always good to see you. So you are running for re-election as state treasurer, and I'm going to ask you about some of your accomplishments during your first term. But for a lot of folks in Western Pennsylvania, as well known as you are in Philadelphia, you're just not that well known here. So let's reacquaint people with your background. Tell us a little bit about Joe Torcella. Who is he? Sure. Well, let's work to change that fact. Uh, my, my, my grandmother actually, my late grandmother was, was born in Pittsburgh. That's where her family emigrated to. Uh, I grew up in northeastern, north central Pennsylvania. Now I live in south eastern Pennsylvania. So the Torcella family covers the geography of almost the whole of the state. Now stop right there. You said your grandmother was from Pittsburgh? She was born in Pittsburgh. Um, she was, uh, her parents were Italian immigrants. She was born there. And then they moved up to Berwick, Pennsylvania, which is where I was born and raised. Okay. Uh, and on one of my trips out there, back when you could easily travel the state, I, I, I looked up the address, but there's no longer a house there. Uh, oh, that's sad. Who, who that's I am. Common. <laughs> I, I, uh, I, I've spent my life, uh, this is my first elected office, uh, but I spent my life um, in a variety of kinds of public service. Um, and earlier in my life, uh, I had a career in business. Um, years ago, I was a deputy mayor uh, in Philadelphia when that city was facing a fiscal challenge. Uh, then I headed and created the National Constitution Center, which your viewers will know as the site of uh, any number of important events in this campaign and many others, but also a kind of homage to our founding document and a great museum about the Constitution. I served as uh, President Obama's ambassador to the UN for management reform and looked after our interest at in the United Nations since we're the largest contributor to that entity. Uh, and for a number of years in my, in, in my 20s, had a career, an a career as a business consultant and uh, did some real estate development as well. So I spent my life sort of wrestling with uh, how, how entities use resources, particularly how public entities use resources. Um, and uh, that's really what the job of treasurer uh, most involves. You sort of anticipated my next question, Joe, which was exactly what does a state treasurer do? Well, a, a, a good one, and I hope I have been one, uh, affects Pennsylvania's lives powerfully and for the better. Uh, the treasurer is the custodian of more than $120 billion of your money. Um, and I always, it's easy to get lost in the abstraction of all those zeros. I like to think of it in much more personal terms. I'm the custodian of the retirement security of you know, hundreds of thousands of Pennsylvania former public servants like my mom, uh, who was a nurse and educator who's now retired. I'm the custodian of the dreams of about 200,000 families who are saving for college through our state's 529 program. I'm the custodian of the unclaimed property that belongs to as many as one out of 10 Pennsylvanians, uh, that especially in times like this, when people are hurting, can make a real difference in helping people get by. So the treasurer looks after the money, um, important to do that with integrity and accountability, um, do that with transparency. And we've been a leader, I've been a leader in my four years and all those things. Um, you, treasurer's also a fiscal watchdog for the state. Do you actually decide where that money is invested and how to protect that money to make sure it grows and we don't lose it in the stock market? Well, for about 20 billion of that money, which is under the treasurer's control, yes, I do. Um, do that in consultation, obviously, with a variety of, uh, of smart and savvy advisors. Um, for other monies, we're just the custodian of it. Um, so the pension fund monies, for example, uh, are we're, we're the sort of repository. We're not the decider. I am one of many votes on the pension board. Now, it's worth noting, John, as you know from our past conversations, that in the cases where I'm in control of the money, we've radically changed how we invest it. We've shifted away entirely from the Wall Street snake oil salesmen who you know, tell us we can, quote, beat the market if we just pay them a handsome fee to do it. Um, and in making that shift, we have saved Pennsylvania's $700 million. Um, in the pension funds case, when I'm on the board, but I'm one of many votes, I've been a vigorous voice for heading in the same direction. Um, we're starting to have some effect, uh, but there's still a hill to climb there. You are now running for a second term as uh, state treasurer. What do you hope to accomplish in a second term that you haven't already accomplished in the first? 
But I do think I've had a, a first term that I'm proud of, and I hope Pennsylvanians are proud of. I think we have restored accountability and integrity to this office, which was three uh, very damaged three of the last five elected treasurers found themselves facing federal charges. So I uh, banned middlemen on day one, this insane practice of paying people to make connections to invest money. I implemented the first ever conflict of interest policy, hired the first ever chief integrity officer. I declined in my own case, a state pension, a state car, reimbursement for meals, did everything I can to set a high standard of integrity. Have been a tough fiscal watchdog, saved 700 million and, and, and many other initiatives um, and have done things we've talked about, the Keystone accounts that are bringing real hope to many Pennsylvania families by giving every baby now born in the state a little nest egg for some form of training or education after high school. But the fact is, John, these four years have gone by you know, lots of accomplishment. There's so much more work to do, particularly now that COVID has caused so much so much human uh, pain and so much economic pain uh, to both the state, but also to its families. So I wanna get hard at work at one of the unfinished business pieces of business that we have, and that's creating portable retirement accounts for the 2.1 million Pennsylvanians who have no way of saving for retirement where they work and helping to give them the dignified retirement they deserve. Um, we just put out a, you know, we, we, we made a dent in the rising cost of higher education with our Keystone Accounts Initiative, which by the way, I'm proud to say, I'm, I'm a proud Democrat running in an election year, proud to say it was a bipartisan initiative. It's being copied by red and blue states around the country. We made a dent in that problem, but we didn't do nearly enough. And we have bigger plans for how we can take a swing at making higher education, which doesn't necessarily mean four years. It might mean a technical degree. It might mean a certificate program, it might mean a two-year degree but making that more affordable for all Pennsylvanians. And you, know, you alluded to the investments because we own, we, you, Pennsylvania, we own shares collectively in almost every company out there. We've been using the power of our Pennsylvania shares to stand up for our Pennsylvania interests. So you saw early in this pandemic when ventilator companies were not permitting hospitals to repair their equipment and this life-saving equipment was unavailable for service and there were shortages of ventilators, we used Pennsylvania shares and led a bipartisan national coalition of treasurers and stood up and said, uh, this is a pandemic. Everyone is sacrificing. We want you to shoulder some of the burden and open up your repair manual so hospitals don't have to pay your expensive service to do it. We succeeded in that. Uh, many other things, you and I have talked about some of them over the years, you know, standing up to opioid companies, more recently standing up on the pricing of the drug remdesivir. There's a lot of work for us to do to continue to protect, both to create new ways to help Pennsylvanians like the Keystone program or the portable retirement program, but also to stand up when Pennsylvanians are being hurt and to use their economic wealth, literally the two words, commonwealth of what we call ourselves a commonwealth, to use that to stop corporations and Wall Street from hurting Pennsylvania. So I have, I, every day of this term has been, uh, has been busy and productive, but there, there, there's much work ahead to be done. You will not be surprised to know that I, of course, have interviewed your opponent, uh, Republican Stacey Garrity, and one of the charges that she makes is that you would not serve out your four-year term that you have ambitions for higher office. Can you, uh, I mean, what's your response to that one way or the other? Yeah. Well, look, my, my, my response to that is I ran for treasurer because I wanted to serve as treasurer. Uh, my record has demonstrated that I've, I've done that well and I've done that in a way that's advanced Pennsylvania's interests. I'm running for treasurer because I want to keep serving as treasurer. I want to keep standing up to Wall Street. I want to keep being a good fiscal watchdog for Pennsylvanians. And I want to keep creating more opportunities for more Pennsylvanians to get ahead. Um, this election on every part of the ballot is too important for us to worry about elections that are years away. So the bottom line, well, years away, two years away. And as you know, if you're going to run in 2022, you're going to really start running next year in 2021. So are you basically saying that uh, you've not, well, first off, that you've not made any commitment to run for any other office at this stage, but you're not ruling it out as a possibility? I'm, I'm basically saying basically saying what I said, which is 
I, I really like this job. I ran for this job to hold this job. I'm running for this job to keep doing this job. What folks say on the campaign trail is kind of a silly gimmick that I don't think Pennsylvanians are interested in. All right, well, we'll let folks determine what exactly you meant by all that. Uh, um, finally, uh, Treasurer Torricello, let me just ask you, how tough is it to campaign during a pandemic like this? Uh, has it really crimped you and your ability to be out and about? It has, um, but uh, you know we have recourse to what you and I are doing now, um, and and that helps. It's sure not the same, but it helps. Um, but uh, you know Pennsylvanians are inventive and creative, and we and they have found ways around the situation we're now in. But it's worth remembering, you know, why we do this. I mean, why we you know th there there is a real joy that you miss uh, when you don't have the kind of, you know, get to all four corners of the state, sometimes in the same weekend, uh, you know, and, and see and meet all kinds of folks and hear their stories. You miss that. Uh, there's, you know, there, there, there's, of course, some that goes on, but not nearly. It's, it's, very, it's very different. But the fact is, we're doing all this because we're Pennsylvanians, and we look out for each other, and this is how we do it in this, in this day and age and with this threat. This is how I like to think of it. This is how we keep people like my mom. If I said her age on television, I'd probably get in trouble. But this is how we keep people like her safe. This is how we stand up together to battle the spread of this disease. So, yeah, it's not as it, it doesn't have some of the fun it once did, uh, but it's a new way of connection. And frankly, I think we're all still pretty connected. And I think that's how we're going to get through this by staying connected. Well, State Treasurer Joe Torricella, Democrat, candidate for re-election. Thank you, sir. I hope you'll come out to your grandmother's native part of the state one of these days. And uh, it's always good to be with you. Thank you again. For you your time. I hope to see you again in person soon, real soon. Our special guest today is Stacey Garrity, who is the Republican nominee for state treasurer in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Ms. Garrity, thank you very much for talking to me. I really appreciate it. John, thank you having me on, for having me on your show. I really appreciate it. You know, I guess more appropriately, I should call you Colonel. You are a reti retired Colonel, is that right? I am. Tell us about your service. Okay, so I served uh, 30 years in the United States Army Reserves. I retired in 2016 because I hit the thing called your mandatory retirement date. So after 30 years, uh, all of a sudden you no longer have a job. Um, but I did uh, three combat deployments to Iraq. My last deployment was in 2008, 2009. I was acting battalion commander at Camp Buka, which is in southern Iraq. Our mission was to provide care and custody for 7,000 detainees. And I had 1,200 soldiers under my command. And we were the very first internment facility to have zero escape attempts and zero abuse allegations. Hmm. Well, and I should right. mention I'm an MP, military police. Well, congratulations on that record, and thank you again for your service. Uh, tell, us, tell us a little bit about uh, your background. Where did you grow up? I'm reaching you, I guess, up in Bradford County, right? You are. So born and raised in Bradford County, which is way up northeast, uh, where we have, we say, more cows than people, um, where all the folks know each other. We like each other. It's a place where you stand for the flag, you kneel to pray, and when you get back up, you look out for one another. But I born and raised here. I uh, actually work in Bradford County as well in Tawanda, Pennsylvania. I've spent uh, 33 years in manufacturing. I work at the world's largest tungsten smelter, well, at least in the Western world outside of China. And uh, I worked my way up to become the first female vice president of the company. And I'm sorry, what's the name of the company? Global Tungsten and Powders. Global Tungsten and Powder. Tungsten, correct. Yeah. So well, we're, a, uh, we're a smelter, tungsten so, smelter. So how did you decide to run for statewide office for state treasurer? <laughs> well, um, you know, after retiring from the military in 2016, I decided it was time to serve again. And uh, when I look at Pennsylvania, I think that uh, the Pennsylvanians deserve a treasurer who is really focused on the job. Uh, my ambition is only to serve. I'm not looking at this as a stepping stone to run for something else. And the incumbent treasurer kind of has one foot out the door. And I think Pennsylvanians deserve somebody who will commit to the four years and watch what the governor spends his last two years in office. You say the incumbent, who is Joe Torcella. Yeah. 
Yeah, you, you say Joe has one foot out the door. Explain that a little bit more, if you would, please. Sure. Well, everybody knows um, he has his sights set on either uh, running for governor or running for Senate. And obviously that uh, will take his focus off uh, the current position. Uh, when asked if he would commit to serve, he said it was, you know, a silly campaign gimmick. And I, I think it's just a simple yes or no answer. And I, I really truly think that Pennsylvanians deserve somebody that's going to be an advocate for every Pennsylvania, be a watchdog for our Pennsylvania taxpayers, and uh, really make sure that we're not spending what wasn't appropriated. Could you describe, Ms. Garrity, the kinds of skills that you would bring to that job as state treasurer? Oh, absolutely. So I do have a degree in finance. And uh, some of the positions I held in the private sector, director of sales and marketing, responsible for $650 million worth of revenue. I was a vice president for two out of our three business units. Um, I am currently vice president of government affairs and industry liaison. And um, I've been very fortunate to push through several pieces of legislation that have helped maintain and create jobs, and which is so important in the area I live because it's very rural. In the military, you, you have a mission and you have to accomplish it, which means you have to reach across the aisle. You don't have the luxury of not working with people if you don't want to. You really have to be focused on uh, the mission at hand. And then finally, uh, uh, Ms. Garrity or Colonel Garrity. You can call me Stacy, John. <laughs> Stacy, thank you. So Stacy, let me just ask you then final question. How in the world do you campaign across a state as big as Pennsylvania in the middle of a pandemic. Has that been challenging? It's been extremely challenging, especially since I've never run for anything. <laughs> so, you know, there's a low name ID, but basically uh, during the period where we were shut down, we were doing multiple Zoom calls every single day. Um, I called every county chair, every committee person, introduced myself in the past couple of months when things uh, opened up a little bit more. I've been in a different county every single day. Uh, three days ago, I drove 500 miles, went to Westmoreland. <laughs> I was in Cambria yesterday. Um, yeah, tomorrow I travel. Um, we're going to Philadelphia. Tomorrow I'm going to the rally in Johnstown. So uh, we're out and about trying to get our message out to as many people as I can, I can meet. We're also doing um, some digital media and some and, and some uh, television in the Northeast and, and hopefully the Johnstown area. I should ask, as the Republican nominee, do you think your success rises and falls on how well President Trump does in Pennsylvania? I do. Yes, I sure do. Uh, a lot of it, I think for these row offices and a lot of other offices, it, it depends uh, a lot, not, not 100%, but a lot on uh, the top of the ticket. Well, again, uh, Stacey Garrity, thank you so much for spending time with me, the Republican nominee for State Treasurer of Pennsylvania. Thank you. Thank you, you John. Pleasure. Thank you. Our temperatures are not going to cool off much tonight, as we typically would be cooling off on an October evening. The warm air is going to be coming in, so it's going to cancel each other.